you probably know that data is really the vast majority of the, the battle when it comes to AI. Looking at data, looking at historical data, really understanding what biases are present in these and how do we make it so that the data that we're feeding into this model actually ends up representing all people in a positive way. What do you yeah. think the right steps are to make sure that uh, the civil applications and, and also the, I would say the positive applications uh, and the positive usage would prevail? Yeah. When I think about ethical AI, I, I think less about the, um, the robot apocalypse or, you know, or mutually insured, assured destruction. And you think more about what, what can we do today to, to prevent things, uh, the bad stuff from happening. One of the big things I think about is we've already seen a lot of examples of where AI serves certain people better than others. Um, if we think of an extreme case, AI being used in court systems to help judges make decisions about things like whether mates should be granted parole or not. And we've seen specific software doing that can actually be racist because it's been trained on historical data. And we see problems like that arise a lot because one, historical data can be problematic, right? We've evolved as a species to be more uh, welcoming and accepting, and that's, that's where we need to be. Now, AI, as we have it right now, the vast majority is trained on historical data. So we really need to think, I think for one, about what our data looks like. Um, when it comes to AI, you know, if, you, if you've built at least one application, you probably know that data is really the vast majority of the, the battle when it comes to AI. So I think big thing, looking at data, looking at historical data, really understanding what biases are present in these and how do we make it so that the data that we're feeding into this model actually ends up representing all people in a positive way and not just representing them, but I think there's a big difference between AI and models that put us into boxes so things like Facebook filter bubbles, where we get really locked into our viewpoint and we only see things that reinforce that. Things that really limit our decision making, limit our ability to connect and make informed uh, decisions and have understanding of the world, and things that actually expand that. Understanding data in a way that can build those models that really enhance our ability to make decisions, be productive, and ultimately be better augmented humans that can create a better world, so to speak. So I think it's one really looking at and analyzing data for bias and very um, day-to-day -day things like prejudice, uh, racism, sexism, et cetera, making sure that it serves all people. The other that I talk a lot about is um, being a woman in AI, I don't see a lot of people that look like me, right? We need to get more. We need to get more people that look like me, more people that look like everybody else in the world. Getting that diverse voice in building AI is going to help in building the future of AI that really makes it serve everyone for the better. And I think everybody out there, even if you are not a programmer, I think sometimes there's a tendency to be afraid of talking about AI. And I think some, some programmers are guilty of making it more of an exclusive thing with language that, um, that makes it scary to talk about, makes it seem more exclusive than it is. I think everybody has the responsibility, regardless of if you're a programmer or not, to really weigh in on this conversation and start talking about it and drive ethical technology in a good direction for us all.